Hi all, welcome to my channel, welcome to my world, this is the world of Wayne and if you're watching live on Thursday evening, welcome to the premiere, hopefully I'm in chat with you now uh, talking about this build, but if I'm not, it means that something's gone wrong at the Insomnia Gaming Festival and I'm not seated. If you're watching this in the future, just ignore everything I just said, because today is new build day and I'm going to be showing you what you're going to be getting and putting together, what we get in the first pack of the Agora Models release of Build the Corvette Stingray. Can't wait to get building this and as you can see this uh pack one does come with a brochure massive brochure it is so i'm going to make sure you get to see what's inside this now just like agora models as i said they also provide these posters in the very first pack and this poster is really really big it's ginormous and it has got all the features and stuff on from this car but what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you the poster first get this open because this is massive i'm gonna have to sit back look <laughs> really if i had room in here i'd love to display this there you go there's all the sizes and stuff on it as well but rather than go through this brochure and tell you about the sizes i'm just going to give you a recap of the video i did to introduce this build and this is here yes that's right agora models new release is the 1963 corvette stingray what an amazing vehicle this is. Now, I am lucky enough to actually have seen the prototype when I went to visit Agora Models a couple of weeks ago. Uh, here's a little bit of footage here from uh, me playing around with the car. Absolutely brilliant. And remember, a couple of weeks ago, probably, and I've been mentioning it on live streams as well, I was saying about a feature on this 1.8 vehicle, which you've not seen on any other vehicle that I know of. Well, this vehicle has got a remote control. So all the lights and stuff are all controlled with remote control. No pushing buttons inside now with this. But uh, I've got some specs for you regarding this. As I said, it is remote control and that operates the electronically rotating headlights, working indicators lights with sound effects, engine sound when the accelerator pedal is pushed, the brake pedal illuminates the stop lights, it's got illuminated dashboard and the steering wheel operates the front wheels, pretty much like you'd know for most of the 1.8 models that we've built in the past for Agora models. You've got an opening hood, wrap over doors, windows and gas filler tube cover. It's got a silver body with red interior and it comes with two sets of wheels. So remember I said that you might need a tire rack soon. There you go. <laughs> And as you can see, this is a first for me. This is absolutely brilliant that we don't have to worry about switches anymore because we're going to have a remote control which is going to have all the dynamic features operated through that remote, which is absolutely brilliant. It's a game changer. I wish all 1.8 vehicles were like that. That would make things a hell of a lot different. Uh, as I said, I've got this all laid out here. If you want to get this for yourself, then just head over to the Agora Models website. I have put the link down here and you can join and build along with me. We've been doing pack one. That's going to be out very shortly. But I can't wait for this. You know how I like these new build days. Without further ado, let's get cracking. So here we go. Look at this. This is what we get in the first pack. We've got the uh, front body panel. We've got a grill. We've got some uh, emblem there. We've got the Corvette number plate. So let's get this open. And just to show you again, this is what we get in the first stage. Always monumental looking at that. Okay, now inside the first tray, you will see that we do have a screwdriver. Uh, you can use this if you want. I am going to be using my own screwdriver. And the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to piece the grill section to the body. And as you can see, we have got mounting points for that here. This is just going to go underneath onto those mounting points. It's going to be held in with AP screws. Now, again, all the screws come in this pack. They are labeled on the bag like that. And there's four of these to put in. So I'll put a couple in. You are going into plastic on these. So when you put these in, make sure you don't put them in too hard. You basically want this to be hand tight. I'm actually just doing this with two fingers. And as soon as I feel resistance, I stop. I've got the last one coming in this time here. And oh, this one I haven't put in all the way. Get that one all the way in. Perfect. There you go. That's the first part of the build complete. Now, as you can see here and on the other side, we've got some recesses there, which we're going to be fitting the indicators to. 
So what we have is these reflectors looking like that. They're going to go into this indent here. There is a notch just in that. So that's going to dictate which way round it goes in. So you know you've got this right because when you line it up, it should fit nice and flush all by itself in there. Just do the same on the other side. Again, just line it up, push it in, and there you go. That should look like that. Then we're going to put the lenses just over the top of that. Again, the lenses, hard to see, but these do have a notch in them as well. And that's going to go into the notch that we have got on the indicator here. And you know you've got that in because when it's in, not going to fall out. Do the same on the other side. And there we go, the front end is coming together. We then need to take the bracket here. Now this bracket is marked with an L and an R just on the ends here. So now this is in my right hand, this is in my left hand. What I want to do is holding it with the letters facing up so I can see them. So it's like that, I'm going to put this over the top of the number plate here. And just push that into place. There you go. And now that is mounted in place. So with this section, what we've done at the front here and this tiny badge, you don't want to lose this. It looks like that. That's all there is to do in that stage. Again, another massive pack for stage two. And we've got this great bonnet on here. So let's get this open. The first thing I need is the left and the right fenders looking just like that. Bumpers, however you want to call it, depending on your location. And I have got some brackets to put into these. Now, once again, these brackets are labeled so you know which one's what. This one's the left one. So I've got the left one here. This is going to be going this way around. So this section here is facing up. We're just sliding it down the end here. So it's above the seat there. And I'm going to screw that in with a CP screw. Again, all the screws you're going to need come in each stage. So one on that side. And I'm just going to do exactly the same on the other side. So again, in this section here on the right hand side, this will be going on this way. Once again, a CP screw to hold that in. So there are limited edition license plates out, but for now I'm going to fit this into place. The way this is going to go is just laying this out like this, this way here. The bracket that we created before is going to go over the points here and on the other side just here. They're going to be held in with BP screws. So that's the one going in on this side. I'm only going to make it loose. I'll tighten them up in a second while I just put the one on the other side. Put it through the bracket first, then offer the fender to this, the bumper, and then make that nice and tight. So there you go. That's in place like that. I'm then going to be joining these bumper sections together with the bodywork that we created first time. And this is just basically going to go through the lips there and there. Kind of like that on this edge, as you can see there. That's how we're going to put that in. We're going to put that in on the other side as well. And that's how that's going to be seated. Now we do want to keep this in place with AM screws just through these two points. Now I'm going into metal so I've put a little bit of oil on my screw. That's just going to make it easier to make these nice and tight. So one that side, tight as I can get it on these ones. Then I'm just going to do exactly the same on the other side here. Get that in and make it as tight as I can. So Looking good, that's how that's looking. Now at the bottom here, we're going to be mounting these two bottom sections with AM screws. Again, a little bit of metal, so a little bit of oil. And make sure these go all the way in there. That's one. And just do the one on the other side. So they're both in like that. And now again, that's how that's looking. And bearing in mind that we do have the bonnet, which we're not actually doing anything with at the moment. That's all there is to do in that stage. Okay, in stage three, we're gonna be attaching the hood reinforcement, latches and vents. I'm just going to take all of these parts out because there's some little tiny fiddly parts that I need now. They are the pin and a spring. What we need to do is take the spring off the pin and we've got a washer 
in here, put the washer on like this, then the spring on like this, then bring over the hood reinforcement here and having it this way round, these are gonna go into the ends here. So on the top section here, they're gonna go like this. So they come out the other side and then I'm gonna use the nut to keep that in place there. So I've got the hex nut here. Because of the spring, it's gonna be a little bit tricky to start this off. But there we go, I've got that in, just twisted that around. So I've got it in a fair distance there. And you only wanna screw this in so that the tip is flush with the nuts underneath. That way you've still got the spring action in there from this way round. You can do exactly the same on the other side. So again, pin, washer, spring, through the hole here and attach with the nut on the other side. And then just screw that in till the thread is flush. And there we go, that's both of those in place. Now I've got a nice soft mat from Partwork Upgrades to put down now, because I don't want to damage the lovely paintwork on the bonnet here. This is just going to go on like this. I'm going to be putting this hood reinforcement now onto this section here. I want it this way round. It's going to go this way. So these catches that we put on the first section are going to go on this edge here. So this is going to go on just like that there. And it's held in with BM screws in six places. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is going into metal. Again, use some oil. And I'll get all six of these screws into place. Perfect. So that's now looking like that. In these areas here, we now have these vents. These are gonna go in one here and one in the other side here. Now these have got a sticky back on them. So I just need to take the stickiness off, just like this, it's sort of like a clear film. And put this into the recess here. Just like that. And do the same on the other side. Film off, line it up. And ensure that sits in the indent there. That is perfect. And that looks now just like that. And that is all there is to do in that stage. In stage four, as you can see here, we're gonna be working on our first wheel. Now we are gonna get a choice of wheels for Stingray. It does say Hayes wheels that were originally intended for the 63 production, but not actually available until later in 64 will be supplied in pack five. You'll then have the choice of wheels for your Stingray. Now all of these rims are metal. Now if you have a look just inside this edge here, there's a tiny notch just at the top. That's gonna be making room for the valve in there. So when I put this in, I wanna make sure that that notch is going behind the valve and it should fit nice and flush in there like that to make the rim. I'm gonna turn this over. I'm gonna be putting two DP screws into the holes here and here. The other hole just down the bottom here is gonna remain free. So just put these screws in here. It's going into plastic, so shouldn't need any oil. That's one and two. We don't want the tire outer rim here. I'm just gonna see if it's written outer and inner on there. Sometimes they are. They look to be exactly the same to me. So that's cool. Just checking the lip inside. This is just gonna push through the center like that. No water, no need to soften the tire up. That's got in perfect. I'm gonna turn this over. And then I've got the other side of this, which is metal. This is just gonna go over here to line up those two screw holes. Again, it's a push in. And they're held in with CM screws. These ones are going into metal. So again, some oil on here. Get those attached as tight as you can get them. And there you go. That's how that's looking. All we've got to do then is just take the hub 
and that's just going to go into the top like that. That's going to keep that safe and that's all there is to do in that stage. In stage five, we're going to be starting to assemble the fuel injection unit. And again, this one now looks like we've got a lot of fine detail parts to put in. So the first thing I'm going to do is take these two sections here. I need to make sure I've got this round the right way. So it should be that way with that little lug there facing down. I'm going to be putting this into the notch that we've got just here. So that goes all the way in so we can see it from there. I'm going to hold that in place with an FP screw. There you go. Perfect. Now on the hole that you can see with the notch out the side, we've got this detail now, which is the enrichment housing. That's just going to go in there and that's held in with an EP screw. Nice and tight. Perfect. I've then got the cover to go on here, which is just to press into these um, lugs here. They are different sizes, so it can only go in one way. So just line it up and then push that in. And make sure it's fitting flush all the way. Now I need these tiny, tiny little details. So get me uh, tweezers out. Now you've got left and right ones of these. They are labeled inside. So this is a right one. Let's see if I can find a left one. This one's a left one. Now on these holes that we've got here, we're going to be putting these into place. So it's the left nozzle is going to go in this side first. So I've got that here. I'm going to push that into the hole. And make sure it's seated all the way in. So that looks just like that. I'm going to do the same with a right hand side one. Making sure the metal is pointing towards the center there. There you go. Perfect. And then on the other side, we're going to do exactly the same thing. The right hand side one's going in here. Get that one out first. That's pushed in. And then the left hand side over here. That's the final one. So that's what it looks like from underneath. But they are both on, on each side. I then want to take what we've just created and that little black bracket we put in that can now slot in through here so we can see it from the other side. That's going to be held in with a DM screw and I have put that in a little bit of oil and I've got this little pipe to put in, very tiny. I'm going to put the straight end in first just to the metal hole that we've got next to the top of this section and again using my tweezers I'm going to put the other section into the hole that I've got into the top of this. A bit tricky, I'll get it in. So it looks just like that there. I've then got the larger pipe here that's going to go in. One side is going into the hole just at the side here. So get that in. Perfect, so that's one side in. Then the gold section of this pipe is going into the hole at the top. Like that. And then the free end of the pipe should be just tucking under here, as you can see just there. Very detailed. We've got the top to put on now. Look at that detailing on top there. It has got a sort of like ramp look to it. We want it to have it this way round. So it looks like that. The larger section up here going down. Turn it upside down. I'm going to hold that in with two FP screws. And I do think this is a great example of how much detail we're going to have on this build, but that's all there is to do in this stage. Actually, I lost myself then. That's all there is to do in this pack. So there's five stages in pack one. And uh, as I said, what we've created is the front end of the car, which is now upside down, looking just like that. We've got the hood done with the detailing on top, underneath with the pins, Put that there. We've done one of the tyres, which looks like that. Remember, there is going to be a change of set of tyres for these as well. So you got the choice there. And then we started the fuel system here. Brilliant. 
Now, if you want to get this for yourself, I have put a link down in the video description to the Agora Models website. You can get this all the way from Pack One. I really do hope you like you. I really do hope you like. I really do hope. <laughs> you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, please remember to subscribe. Other than that, take care.